Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Hello, hello and welcome back to my channel. First of all, sorry for the long gap between my uploads. It was not intentional, my day job just required more of my time this past month. Again, I'm so sorry, but I am here now with the third installment of the Celestial series. Thank you so much to everyone who voted at my community tab poll. I decided to go with King Arthur's suggestion because I like how simple it is and it's gender neutral, unlike my suggestion, Celestial Goddesses. As you know from the thumbnail, the next Celestial in line is Mercury. I decided to do the planets in the correct order, starting at Mercury and moving away from the Sun, and ending in Pluto. I think it makes the series more engaging for you, and this way you can leave comments and suggest things for the next doll. So in the comments section of this video, you can leave ideas for what I should do with Venus. I already have an idea, but I'm always open to your suggestions. While I'm preparing the doll and rerouting her, let me unpack some of the inspiration I gathered about Mercury. First of all, Mercury was named after the Roman god of the same name. He was the god of merchants, luck, trickery and thieves. He also serves as the guide of souls to the underworld. That's why I chose to use Claudia's head, because she has a very mischievous grin. That I think suits this character. I do not want my doll to be a literal representation of the god Mercury, so I'm not making it too accurate, but it's fun to incorporate some of the aspects of the god, and have small nods to it in my design. Yarn is my go-to when I want short or textured hair. I went with this gorgeous electric blue yarn inspired by the latest picture of Mercury taken by NASA's Messenger spacecraft. The picture is just beyond gorgeous, don't you think? I had a little mishap with the glue and it ended up seeping through the fabric covered ear holes and staining the yarn. I'm not gonna redo the hair because I think I can just camouflage it. If you are a returning subscriber, you might know that I don't like the classic Monster High body. I prefer the reboot Big Sister or Little Sister body. And I was able to find a reboot Claudine. So I'm gonna change out the classic Claudine body. I actually stole Claudia's original big sister body for my moon goddess doll, so that's why I need to give her head a new body. I removed the doll's head after heating it up with some hot water. Exacto knife is great for removing the molded on details, visible seam lines and other factory markings. Because the doll is a deeper skin tone, you can clearly see the scratches left from the sanding. To smooth out the surface, I will use matte varnish. When I was reading about the planet Mercury, what stood out to me as a cool thing was that Mercury is officially the smallest planet, but it has a massive iron core. And I decided to incorporate that as this gem piece in her chest. So I'm making a hole in her chest with my Dremel tool, making sure not to mess with the articulation of the arms. Once I'm happy about the size, I filled the extra space at the back with cotton. I make the walls of her chest cavity out of magic sculpt. To be able to add the gem piece layer, I insert a pin that I have cut and molded to my liking. This will help to anchor the gem piece in place. After 
after letting the magic sculpt cure, I can continue with her face. I protect her hair with a piece of cloth and spray my first layer of Mr. Super Clear Flat Sealant. The biggest issue I have is that her head is a completely different color to her body. So I mix a custom color of pastels that I can apply to her face and a little bit to her body to make them match. It looks really promising, but after the sealant, the color changes back completely. I did do a second coat, but decided that it was not working and changed my approach. I did one layer of the peachy nude pastels in hopes of cancelling out the colour underneath and to have a base that I could build on top of. She did look kind of corpse-like at this point, but with a few coats more and some blushing and contouring, the colour started to look good. While I was adding all these layers of MSC, I might as well start building up her smoky eyeshadow, lip color, and I wanted her to have an overall shimmer to her skin. And I love the texture the MSC together with the Perlex powder gave to the doll's skin. To shape out her eyes, I went straight in with black because her eyeshadow was already in place. I used my favorite white pencil for her eye whites. It's the General's Chalk Pencil in white. I am ever so grateful for Blank Space Dolls for sharing this innovation with everyone. Talking of Blank Space Dolls, he also did a doll inspired by the planet Mercury as a part of a solar system collab that I'm slightly salty I didn't make the cut. But I like to think that they ran out of planets and could not invite any more people. But in all honesty, I loved that collab. I watched all of the videos and loved all of them. And that is a part of the reason why I wanted to tackle the planets myself. Now back to the doll. Because I did the black eyeshadow first, lighter colors such as her waterline have a hard time popping, so I opted for using a brush and some water. At this point I added her lashes with a black pencil. To embrace Claudia's smiling mold, I outlined some of her teeth with a grey pencil. In addition to the bronze Perlex powder, I also used this duo red-blue one for that ethereal, otherworldly glow. To really make her eyeshadow look special, I added some color shift paint in cobalt blue to her lids. You can see this yellow ochre color on the planet's surface from NASA's messenger pictures. I adore yellow and blue together, so her eyes get a up to no good yellow hue. I have seen Poppin Atelier use pastels to shade the eyes, and I wanted to try out that. And I really do like it. I might do this every time from now on. I had to put some acrylic paints on top of her pupils because my pencils was too sharp and it scratched some of the sealant off. While we are experimenting, I thought that I could use this white marker to do the catch lights. But um, no, it was not building up the way I would like it. So it's a fail and I go back to acrylic paint. I seal her face the final time before I do the gloss varnish on her eyes and only teeth this time. I want her lips to look very natural because the eye makeup is kind of a lot. I protected the cavity on her chest with some kneaded eraser while I was doing her face up. So now that we are done with her face, it can come off. I mentioned the iron jewel I wanted to add to her chest. 
I made it out of craft foam. A coat of black acrylic paint act as a base and then I can coat the gem in Tamiya Colors metallic varnish in gunmetal. This is the same varnish I use for the eyes, but it has a metallic finish. Before attaching the iron gem, I unwrapped the cocoon on her head. To secure the gem, I used some super glue and pushed the gem into the pin I added earlier. The moon and the sun goddesses I have already made have some forehead markings, so I decided to continue that. This time I didn't design my own, but used the official symbol of Mercury. I do plan on incorporating the symbol of each planet into the doll's design, but I might switch up the placement from time to time. Next, we need to tackle her hair. Styling this hair was a journey, and I was not quite sure if I liked it, but in the end I was able to save it. While I was rerouting the doll, I knew the hairstyle I was going for, so I only rerouted the crown of the head and the hairline. My thought behind it was that I could use some decorative metal wire together with the hair weaved through it to create the shape that I wanted. I grab a small section of hair from the top and from the bottom, then pull them tight and twist the wire to catch them and I go around the entire head like this. At this point I knew I wanted to add something to cover the edge because I could not get it as straight and neat as I would have liked. But I didn't know what, so I left it to simmer in my brain while I moved on working on her outfit. I made a pattern for some leggings, because both of the sun and the moon dolls already have a dress, and I wanted something different. I share later on the video how I make my patterns, but I cut out the pieces for the leggings in this iridescent scale fabric. That reminds me of the planet's crater-filled surface. Instead of an atmosphere, Mercury has an exosphere that's unable to burn away debris like our atmosphere. That's why the surface is riddled with craters. I sew the pieces together, starting with the two front seams and moving on to the back seams and finishing off the center back seam with an elastic thread, so that I'm able to pull the leggings past her hips. Here is how I make patterns for doll clothes. I first wrapped it all in cling film and then in masking tape. I then draw on the pattern pieces, or basically where I want the seams to go. Then I remove it from the doll and transfer that to paper. I clean up my lines and add darts or other modifications like extra space for closures to the paper pattern before cutting it out in my fabric. I really like this weirdly yellow fabric. I think it matches her eyes nicely. I accidentally cut a chunk off of one of the corners, so I had to recut the piece. To assemble the top, I start by gluing down the arm sides seam allowance for a neat finish. The glue worked so well that I decided to use it for attaching the collar. I sew up the darts so that the top would fit snugly. I hem the top using some more glue and then it's time to figure out how to close this thing. I first thought of using a jump ring, but in the end used some beads as buttons and added some elastic thread to loop around them. A few loops at the start of the elastic create a nice oriental slash avatar the last airbender inspired look for the top. The circular cutout that exposes the gem on the chest is just spot on, I think. In addition to her top and leggings, I want her to wear a long coat. I think it's a garment that a shady merchant or an alleyway thief would wear. The coat is going to have some see-through panels and a train to mimic Mercury's sodium tail. 
How the tail is formed on the planet is fascinating. Sodium atoms are escaping from Mercury's exosphere into space, and the ultraviolet radiation emitted from the Sun is ionizing them. The process is similar to how our northern lights are created. This is a very unique property. Tails usually only form on comets, and no other planet has a tail. So I really wanted to capture it in my design. I made a pattern using the technique I previously showed you and extended the coat to the length I wanted. I cut out the sheer panels from the net fabric that you saw me bedazzle earlier with glitter glue. It reminds me of the planet's uneven surface and makes the coat look really pretty and magical. Just one layer of the mesh was looking too thin, so I doubled it up and used some more of the glitter glue to cement them together. I cut the coat's main pieces out of solid, thin black fabric. I treat the edges with matte medium to stop them from fraying. I also create a pattern for the hood, because every shady alleyway thief needs a hood. This is when things get a little chaotic, because I spent a week visiting my sister across the country, and I took the coat with me to finish it while I was on this trip. So the filming is not great, I didn't have my lights with me or my tripod, but hopefully you can make out what I was doing. I start at the center back seam on both of the outer and the lining layer. Only the solid layer has a lining, so that's the reason why I need to work on the lining and the outer pieces simultaneously. I attach the front pieces of the coat and then insert the smaller piece of see-through fabric. When all of the panels are sewn together, I can tackle the hood. The hood's lining and outer part are a solid piece and it gets folded after sewing the curved back seam of the lining and outer side. I then connect the shoulder seams. I sandwiched the hood between the two layers of the solid fabric. I wanted the sleeves to be a different fabric than the main body, and to tie in with her boots that you will see later. So I chose to use a faux leather fabric for both of them. And that's the jacket done. I used a different doll as my mannequin while I was away. In this you can see the boots part way done. So let's rewind and show you how I got here. I again made a pattern for the fabric part of the boot. I wanted the boots to be wider at the top, so the pattern gets wider and wider as it reaches the edge. To make it easier to fit the boot over the doll's legs, I cut the pattern pieces on the fabric's bias. This way they will have some stretch to them. I then sew up the back seam just at the heel and then leaving a gap and continuing after skipping the narrowest point, all the way to the top edge. To sew up the narrowest point, I use some more of that elastic thread, this way there is enough give for the heel of the doll's foot to pass through the narrowest point on the ankle. For the other sole and toe cap, I will be using these random factory Monster High shoes. I have gathered quite a collection and I need to start using them up. The problem is I like to make my own shoes, so this is me trying to combine both. To create the missing toe cap part, I will be using hot glue. The cling film is there to protect the doll's toes and make sure I can remove the heels afterwards. I also remove the ankle straps and the drips to get a cleaner look. The hot glue is too textured after applying it straight from the nozzle, so I would use a heat gun to melt the surface and getting it smooth again. It worked like a charm, highly recommend. 
I used some paper to act as the inner sole that the shoe uppers and the toe caps get glued on. I cut the toe cap free from the outer sole with my exacto knife. The shoe upper gets pulled down and glued over to toe cap and under the inner sole. After the gluing, there is a big crease where the toe cap ends. So to cover it, I will add some chain details to fill in that area and make it look nice. I paint the heels with electric blue to match her hair and add a little bit of that color shift paint in cobalt blue for a shiny detail. I glue on the outer soles, hiding all the ugly bits left from gluing down the shoe uppers. Now what is left to do is fix her hair. The god Mercury is depicted of having a winged helmet and boots and a staff with two serpents twisted around it. I know that sounds like the Greek god Hermes, but Mercury, the Roman god, wore the look first. So I decided to go with a stylized headpiece reminiscent of those wings on either side of the god's head. I also decided to give her a staff, again very stylized, but I think you can pick out the two serpents twisting around the staff. And now we are done. I did decide to tweak her off camera just a little bit, like adding the pouch to her leg for important messages or stolen items or coins. I feel like she is the type of character that will sell you something, and when you're not looking, she will steal it right back. Her coat was a nightmare to sew, but looks amazing now that it's done. I think the mixed metal look is interesting, but I do understand if there are people who don't like it. I am extremely excited to be continuing this series. I have so many ideas for the different dolls. Tell me in the comments what planet you are the most excited for. I think Venus, who is up next, is the one who I'm the most excited for. Later in the series, I might want to experiment with more alien looking design. I think her gemstone is a good start, but I want to expand on that. I am very eager to hear your ideas for Venus and what planet you are the most excited for. you guys so much for watching subscribe if you haven't yet done that like this video and leave a comment i would love to know what you think of the celestial series and my goddess of mercury doll until next time bye